Hello, everyone. I think it's time for us to start our session today. Um, I would like to welcome everyone to our Moonshot Meetup number five, The Future of Job in Metaverse. I am Shanakan Meng Meng Kang from VC team of SCB10X. I'm going to be your host for today. And today we have um, our two speakers with us. Um, we would like to uh, Introduce the first one first. Um, Hun Megan Rapasi, Hunagrid Datikan, founder and creative director of Lumi Labs. And our next speaker is Kun Tang Jirat Kanjaluk, director of content and marketing, Kantana Group Public Company Limited. Welcome to our panel today. <laughs> Yeah, for the objective of the panel today, we will learn about the metaverse vision from the industry leader, include challenges and opportunities in metaverse, and learn what are the most in-demand jobs in the metaverse, as well as the skills that require and also how to develop them. So a little bit of the housekeeping. Um, we would like you to have uh, we would like to have your attention to to the speakers and keep your voice low. Um, we also would like to ask for your consent for photographing because we'll, we'll have you know if you see the camera please smile and you see your uh, photos in our Facebook afterward. And most importantly, the food will be available at the pantry after the panel. So let's start with the panel today. I would like to start with the metaverse definition. I think there is no right or wrong in this answer because for me, I think metaverse is like, it can be anything and there's no like exact definition, right? For me, I think metaverse is like a ready player one movie where you can be like inside the virtual world and you can experience things like beyond your imagination. So let's hear what our speaker thinks of the metaverse can start with you first, Megan. Um, well, well, I think like Metaverse has two sides. Like one side is like the uh, extended reality, like you just mentioned, like in Ready Player One, where people are fully immersive into like another, like uh, uh, another like world, right? Um, but like on the other side, like we have uh, the one like the sandbox where it, it is also a virtual world. Um, the people like identity is also in like that world, the same as like the one with like a ready player one. And, but like another thing that it also does is like, it allows people to have like the true ownership of like their creation or whatever they purchase in like the metaverse. So for I'm um, to summarize like my my points, I think like what metaverse required um, is first is the immersiveness of like the experience, whether um, you are inside like that. Ex, uh, that experience or your identity as avatar is inside it. Um, and second is the social connection. Because like, well, it's the world, like you need to be able to like connect with other people, right? Um, and the third one is the, the true ownership. Yeah. Thank you so much. What about you, Kun Tang? I agree with Kun Megan. Um, personally, I feel like Metaverse can be anything like, like you said, um, games or even lands or a sandbox, for instance. But then like, I feel like it is a place where you are actually transported into the unlimited, uh, unlimited um, experiences and immersiveness, um, especially to be involved in immersive experience and content. And uh, for me personally, as a content provider, um, it is it is also a new platform for us to you know engage with the community as well, um, and we also believe that I think it's the future of um, content and um, immersiveness. Um, yes. Oh, fantastic! And can you tell us a bit more about your journey in the metaverse? Why like why metaverse? Like what sparked your interest in metaverse, Megan? 
um, <laughs> let's say like 2020 turned my life around. Like um, <laughs> during 2020, I, I was still an architecture student, uh, a graduate student at University of Pennsylvania. But when COVID hit, uh, I decided to come back and then I got interested in cryptocurrency. And that's when I start learning about like blockchain and the concept of ownership and creator's economy. Um, and one day I got to meet um, Pitai, uh, CEO of scb 10 x and, and got to talk to her about like metaverse just a little bit. And at that time, like um, scb 10 x has a plan to work on like the, an experience in like on the sandbox. And so like she asked me like, oh, are you interested in like working on, on this project? And that, that's like, that's how like Lumi Lab actually start. And that's how I get to know like um, SB10X and work on their headquarters since, yeah. Okay, for, for me, um, we were dealing with COVID as well. And then we were working from home, um, me and my family and uh, my colleagues, we were talking and then um, the trend about cryptocurrency and um, sandbox as well. Um, trading of land has uh, um, come to uh, our conversation and then uh, we put this issue to, to the board and then uh, requested to buy some of the land. So we, we bought some of the lands as well. And um, from that point, we, we see that it is important for us to start investing or um, learning new things about um, Web3 or even um, things on Sandbox. What is Metaverse? We were like trying to figure it out back back then, right? Um, so yeah, from that point, we have been um, pursuing this path and uh, we have a little team set up and um, and now we uh, in September we will be launching our games on Sandbox and Roblox, for instance. It's been it's been quite a journey, but yes. Wow, interesting. Yeah. And yeah, Thank you. congrats that your you. yeah, <laughs> project's going to launch soon. Yeah, and you, you guys have something in common that is the sandbox, <laughs> right? Yeah, but frankly, uh, I think everyone knows that metaverse may not be as high, may not be as excited as it used to be, right? Many left the scene, but, but you're still here. So uh, I'd like to know uh, how do you see the future of the metaverse and what are the opportunities that you see? We start with Kuntang first. So initially we feel like um, metaverse is a piece of a virtual, virtual land where people go in and trade land, mm -hmm. making profit and, and also loss. But um, as of now, I think like the immersive experience, the activities, the games that uh, have been played on on online on Sandbox um, has created created a new sort of like a new paradigm of virtual experience. People can meet, can work, can enjoy their life on um, on Metaverse, and I think that it is another great opportunity for us, for everyone to um, jump right in and um, explore more because. We can have um, we can have uh, more opportunity opportunities uh, in terms of like meeting new people, um, clients, businesses, business partners, and stuff, as well as as well as new friends, or even monetize on your new projects and whatnot. Um, it's a it's a big opportunity for us to jump in. I think, yeah. What about you? You have any comments? Um, for me, like the future of metaverse. Um, have have you ever thought about like one day you will watch about uh watch like five second reels for like maybe like 20 in a row like we, we we've never have thought of that like it sounds like really boring and then people got addicted to it my mom got addicted to it i yeah, <laughs> i think a lot of people got addicted to it um i I, I think metaverse will eventually create like some kind of new user experience. And that's our job as creators, uh, the job of the platform to figure it out. Like what will be that, that, um, that kind of experience that we are going to give to like our users. So 
Um, to be frank, I, I, I think there's still a lot, a lot to learn, a lot for us to like discover. Um, but I think it's, it's heading into the place that eventually going to surprise us. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot to learn, a lot to explore, and technology are evolving every day, right? Yeah, let's rolling into our topics for today. It's about the future of job in the metaverse, right? Um, so I just want to understand about your view about you know the, the metaverse job in Thailand and also the talents in Thailand today. Megan, do you want to go first? Oh yeah, um, I think Thai creators are amazing. Well, I'm I'm one of the Thai creators, <laughs> of course. I say I'm amazing. No, no, I'm kidding. Um, I um, if you go into like the sandbox uh uh Twitter, um, every week they have a campaign called like Vox Edit Weekly. Basically, it is a Vox Edit competition that uh, all creators around the world will submit. They have like different prom, and they they also give out like like a total price, I think it's around like 15,000 sands per week. If if you would like to come in and create and, and try, like Vox Edit Weekly would be like a good a good place to start. Um, every single week, um, not, not most of the week, I see Thai creators want something. Like they are great, but 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 not a lot of us are there. Like I still, I. I see like similar like people. I see familiar uh, account, <laughs> and I know okay. I know this person. This is Thai, so yeah. That and and I think like a lot of Thai players are also like doing investing on the land as well as well as like they go into like um, events, sandbox events, whether it's alpha four or no alpha, alpha um, tournament. Or um, or other events, uh, special events. Um, there's a lot of Thai people participating. Interesting. And for yourself, as like um, the brand owner, right? What opportunities, or uh, like job opportunities, do you see for Thai people, Thai talents in the metaverse? I think most importantly, um, one of the key factor for the five real magnet. In terms of metaverse, is of, of of course it's uh the content and experience, right? So I believe that experienced creator, um, architect, designer, is one of the most important um, job opportunities in 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 Thailand and uh, probably around everywhere. And um, it's hard to be honest, because um, to create fun content and um, addicted content to the fans or the users. It takes a lot of time and learning, of course, and um, with technology is evolving every day. Uh, it, 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 pro it shows a lot of challenges as well. And I feel like apart from this, of course, um, on the other side, we have programmers, 3D model modeling and you know everything else is also important, but I think the key, the heart of of each experience comes from the content itself, to be immersive. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Can I ask um, from our audience today, um, how many of you are in the you know ha have a job in the metaverse already? Like the job that Kun Tang mentioned, the designer, the engineer, anyone? Anyone would like to go yeah. into the metaverse? <laughs> That's my next question. She can read my mind. <laughs> yeah, I know you, you guys are probably shy, but I know that you are interested in, in this, you know, in, in job in metaverse. Otherwise, you'll not be here today, right? So I uh, want to throw a question to Megan. What skills, skill sets that require to be a creator uh, or any jobs that you think is most in demand in the metaverse and also like how to develop them? Um, I, I, I think the most important thing is the soft skill. Like you need to understand one thing, like this, like this industry evolved so fast. Um, the tools that we are using every day changes every day. Um, you need to be able to learn new things really fast 
pick up the new concept really fast. But the most important thing that you need to have is to understand how things work. Um, basically, um, if I if I would give an example, I would give from like Waxedit. Waxedit is a program that um, we use to create asset for the sandbox, um, a voxel base. But what it does is not just like building voxel, like blocks by blocks, like a Lego. Well, they, they do something more than that. They do animation on it. So if you have a basic knowledge about animation, how things work, how rigging work, how um, different parts move and interact to each other, understand about like the sea fighting and how to fix it. Um, with those kind of thing, it would give you a head start like in a new program. Like tomorrow it might not be Wax Edit that, that we're working with. It could be like something else that we're working with. But these like basic knowledge will actually help me understand like the new program like much faster yeah what about you Kuntang? anything to add um uh these are the feedbacks that i that i've got from my my uh, my team um well some of them uh, they have been working in uh, animation and uh, like like megan said you have to know these basic knowledge and be adaptable to the new programs and technologies, platforms, whatever it is, you can be very versatile and adaptable to you know ch things that are change changing every day. Um, in addition to that, I feel like another thing that is important is that you're you're dealing with people, you're you're dealing with with uh, actual human being. So social interaction is one of the another important. Um, aspect aspect that I would say that uh, it is important for for the developer for the programmer um, to have if you don't understand how people interact in, in in real life it would be almost impossible for you to make it work in the metaverse yeah, right so like very difficult to plan the space like oh this is a space for people um that are going to hang out but like oh you don't know how to hang out with people that's that's gonna be a bit odd right. mm. and do you see any like challenges or barriers for people from web 2 to move into web 3 the creators from web 2 to move into web 3 and how do you think you can tackle those challenges um, I, I think the challenges, uh, like in general, like literally like everywhere in metaverse, like to be honest, um, user experience is actually quite difficult uh, for people that doesn't understand anything about Web3 to come in and pick up the concept of like, oh, what is the NFT and what is the block? There are two things, like two, two things that you can create, like, oh, how are they different? Um, that's one thing. And then then you have to think about like the wallet address. Um, like those like those basic things would probably like be the largest barrier for people who who are not that good at tech to jump into this. Like not all creators have like a tech mind person, right? Um, and I think the other thing is that, it's not only a barrier for for the creators it's also a barrier for like the end user as well mm -hmm. and then like us as a creators would think like oh this is so difficult to onboard like our end user how are we going to create like an experience um to do that that that's a challenge and also like it's also an opportunity for us like um Lumi lab doesn't only work on like designing experience but we work on finding problem and solution um, to help tackle with these issues as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. And, User and, experience is the key, right? Yeah. To increase accessibility. Yeah. And like eventually we'll uh, open the door for more people from Web 2 to Web 3. Yeah. I agree to that.
Yeah. So those in <laughs> actually is not uh, I'm not done with like my oh, question, okay. uh, my, my answer yet. So <laughs> sorry. So like with I those like in, infrastructure that like are still like lacking of good user experience, I think the tool is also like very important because like the tool right now it's uh like I said, it it's changing all the time, it is evolving all the time. So um for creators like like I said, that we actually have to keep up with, like, be proactive with, like, new changes, learn new things really fast, pick up the new concept really fast. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, you know, change and adaptation is also very important, yeah, to be in, you know, this area, either in Web 2 or Web 3. But if you're in the tech industry, yeah. then something that you have to keep that in mind. Yeah, and for Kun Tang, understand that you, uh, you are a content provider, right? And there's a, a shift from traditional way to uh, creating content in the metaverse. It, do, do you see any changes or challenges to your team and how do you tackle them? Yeah. Um, well, I feel like we have to learn, try and trial and error by, by together you know because I'm, I'm not like an, an expert in in this field as well but uh we we see the importance of why we have to do it because it it will be the future of course uh and um we have our own ips mm. since we're um, content creators so what we understand is that we should be able to make all these uh, IPs and turn them into something that is useful, that are useful in the metaverse, um, and also can be um, enjoyed by the users, not just to be put there and that's it, you know, because like, okay, we have a, an animation film, uh, people know it, but how do we make it fun? We have to create a, a new storyline, we have to uh, redesign stuff, we have to make it into um, a new design that fits with the platform, whatever it is. These are all the challenges. Um, dealing with the team is also another challenge. People seem to be very, um, they have their own ways of like, you know, things should be like this and that. And we have to like try to, to try to find a middle ground. It's like, okay, let's, let's just go on this path, and, you know. Um, okay, ultimately I feel like uh, it's it's a process of living and learning, and also thank you to you guys for giving us the opportunity, you know, for having us to be a partner with Sandbox, having our games in there. Um, yeah, I feel like that 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 should be. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if that is enough for the answer, oh, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, thank you, we'll be part of you know our big family here. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and um. Let's, uh, you know, pause it a bit because we have another special guest um, be with us today. Hi, Seb. Hi. Do you see us and hear us loud and clear? Yeah, I see everyone. Thank you. Uh, sorry for being late. It's some connection issues with uh, Teams. But here I am and I'm excited to talk on the topic. Hi, Seb. Can you uh, introduce yourself for a little bit for our audience? Absolutely. I, my name is Sebastian Vanger. I'm the COO and co-founder of the Sandbox, as well as the president of the Blockchain Game Alliance. Yeah, welcome you to the panel today. And we have another two speakers, amazing two speakers with us here at District X, Bangkok, Thailand as well. Kun Megan Rapazi and Kun Tang Jirat. Good to see you again, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yes, good to see you again. I only see uh, one of the two, like uh, the, maybe the camera doesn't show that uh, like stream side, but I you have to wave, wave your hand oh, okay. over there. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we are talking about the future of job in the metaverse. Then I would like to throw some questions to you um, because we already. Uh, got some perspective like from the local creators and uh, content provider, right? So we would like to understand for your from your global point of view. Um, from your organization in the sandbox, um, 
What job in the metaverse that you think is the most in demand right now? So at the moment, I think like creators is the most in demand. Like we are seeing uh, like all this ecosystem that's been developing for the past 12 months with now over 230 studios in 30 countries or continents. And those studios, they have still uh, like many projects coming up, either from top brands uh, here in Thailand and also from other regions of the world. And sometimes they also have their own internal project as the platform is going to open self-publishing very soon. And they have that constraint, like they have to build those experience in a rather short timeline. And they are unable to find enough uh, vocal artists who are essentially the content designers and really get populate those experience. Animators who are like making those content like more live, more animated. And sometimes as well, uh, like to the architects and the level designer who are essentially like populating those environments and adding the gamification mechanics behind. So if we are, uh, they are unable to find those talent, they tend to search on like people who is similar skills, either like coming from uh, a background in 3D animation, 3D art, etc. And some of them, they also went into like launching their own workshop and training program. And I've seen that uh, developed quite recently in Asia, I think uh, academies, university offer like short programs, three months long for them to become like voxel artists and designers of the manager, working on concrete projects for those brands, being on rank with this sort of companion age where like to have like someone who or review your work as you design concrete content that will go live and uh, be certified to then work into like production level uh, content. However, the exciting thing is that like, this is just the beginning. And the creator, I think, is only a tiny portion of the whole job spectrum that we're going to envision within Shadows. As a matter of fact, once those experiments will be live, you will need people to keep them updated like running what we call live ops in the video game industry, which is, uh, which can be thought like in the same way as you open like a shopping mall or, or a restaurant, you want to bring people in. So you want to always like refresh your menu. You want to have an activation uh, happening. You want to welcome uh, and organize sometimes time limited events on certain dates that uh, will engage people to come back or just to have fun. And, uh, community managers, hosts, tour guides, people who are curating content and organizing activities are job in the map. We're also seeing uh, people who organize events like job fairs, weddings, uh, wellness, and other activities in those space. Even simple like virtual um, dance clubs. So they organize like DJ nights where you have, they, they invite and bring out friends, listen to some. Uh, DJs. I think like we're just scratching the surface here in terms of like the, the, the possibilities. I see the play side will start to rise again, uh, probably by the end of the year. I think uh, creators will also offer rewards, quests, and some users will find that collecting different rewards could be useful as they it drive an economy behind all those different that you own, you have the freedom to choose if you want to transfer them, exchange them, sell them. And, and this is a, a gain of time that some creators uh, and, and users might be looking at. So interestingly, I just had a meeting with a platform called ED.gg. Like that's what they provide. Like they provide basically quests and tasks and mission for matching like experiences to players. And um, it, it's interesting to see like there is in an ecosystem already services of matchmaking these demands and those needs. Oh, thank you so much. You talked about a lot of opportunities in the metaverse and you guys jot down, make sure you guys jot down <laughs> all the opportunities that um, Seb mentioned. And Seb, um, just want to understand from your point of view of the local talents, like you are in India right now and we are in Thailand right now, right? Um, do you think, you know, the local talent can go global? 
yeah, because metaverse is like, you know, there's, there's no country in particular, right? What do you think about this? Uh, so, yeah, I like to think like the metaverse is like this global digital nation without borders. And talents has no borders. Basically, um, we've seen teams from the US working with artists from Ukraine. We've seen projects um, that I thought were actually based in France, and then I met the artists here in India or sometimes in China. So it's really global in the culturization, and it became global thanks to uh, the team, the work of our teams on the ground to present these opportunities uh, to the creator, present like the creator economy, and um, present like, like how accessible those two are, meaning like people can really. It, it has been like a, a strong transformation in a lot of people's jobs and careers. Like many of the creators working in a platform like Sandbox, they never imagined that they would become architect of the megaverse or, or designers in the metaverse. Like maybe they were meant for more like uh, jobs in service industry or in finance and banking. We have a perfect example of people who were working in a bank you know, uh, or investment funds and, and now it's allowed like spawn out their career to become like more in the creative side mm -hmm. that that's really interesting and uh, recently uh, we, we have made a, a video documentary in Korea, for example where a teacher uh, like we followed the, the day of or the week of the teacher for quite some time where like he found about sandbox and then he trained 200 students about sandbox in, in his own school and like how that career shift has happened for him um I think like the talent also web three brings like a great equalizer in terms of like how talent gets paid. This very unfortunate fact that the people who are the most creative, who bring the most value to this experience, games, uh, movie, films, uh, and, and general entertainment content that we consume, are usually the one that are the least paid in the industry. And it's even more terrible that like uh, certain like uh, market prices tend to crush down the prices to what the artists to maximize profit for like older actors in the industry. And, and so there is not a fair redistribution of the, the revenues that those products generate toward the people who contribute to build them. In Web3, like it's all transparent. And the digital assets you own, you sell them and you keep maximum part of the value you generate, 95% in the case of a platform like Sandbox. And I think it's important to show like it doesn't matter the country you're from. If you're a talented artist, like there should be like some sort of basic income and even a basic standard of revenue where like, like someone in India, someone in Thailand will earn the same as someone in US, in Japan, in Korea. And we need we might, might take some time until we reach that, but overall, like Web3 enabled those opportunity to be again discussed and to to be a, um, a driving force for that equalization of level and distribution of revenue to other creative instead of other uh, actors of the chain of value. Thank you so much, Seb. Yeah, and would like to hear from our panels, uh, two of our speakers here today as well. Like. Um, uh, what what do you think of the like career path of the metaverse creators in in uh, you know in in your company, and also like uh, what are the resources or the supports that you can give to the the creator? Okay, you you uh, go first, please. Um, um, for me is the one thing is to always invest in in your your team members um which is essentially mean that they they have to be able to keep up and stay ahead of the game um whatever it is if there's new um technology new design uh new programs or whatever we have to make sure that they are in the the program i mean um to 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 um to be able to use and adapt to all these new um, technology or the, all these programs in order to you know create whatever we are doing the projects and um on their career path I think like um for us our team is not so big 
yet, but I think in the f near future we are expanding quite quite a lot, and I think it is a um, pretty good um, uh, increasing uh, feedback uh, in a good way. I would say um, in terms of like uh, the projects and uh, the 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 feedbacks from our client and uh, um, business partner that um, heard about what we're doing right now at the moment. Yes. Yeah, amazing to learn that you invest a lot in your resources. Yes, yes. we have to. Uh, we um, we invested in a lot of technology that are used to make um, uh, metaverse and games. Um, we flew around just to see what's new and try to be the center of uh, Southeast Asia in terms of like uh, the the one stop service uh, in terms of a technology and a staff member, basically. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. And Megan, I think, uh, do you have any like comment on what needs to be improved or any support that, you know, if, if you are creators, uh, what support do you want or, you know, require to develop the skills as a creator? Um, I, I think a thorough like documentation would help when when uh, the new things like came out. It it would speed things up, like speed the learning. <laughs> Seb is like smiling. <laughs> um, but um, uh, other support like the sand. The, well, if we talk only on like the sandbox, um, the sandbox has like a very good like community, and good support, and they have like a uh, good. Um, Good, kind of like good communication with uh with their community so like um every time there are new updates there's always alert um and that's that's always like people on like discord group when we don't know something we just type out like hey how can we do this thing like we we, we don't know how to figure uh this thing out like with me and my team like we're we're we're, we're a new team, we're a small team, but we are learning new things all the time. And we always, always like find new things, um, experiment like new logic, new game mechanics together, and then create some fun stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, I feel like a, a really good working environment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And for for Seth, for a larger organization like like the Sandbox, right? How do you attract and motivate and support your talents? So, so it's a great question. Like, how do we foster like this kind of creativity and ensure that it, it remains all the time? So, we there's two things that we're doing. Uh, the first one is like we have internal creative team that are working on certain of our uh, most important partnership on the production of those experiences. And we want to bring, uh, we, we mix young talent with top talent. So like there's always this learning curve and they feel like a lot of aspiration. So you bring like a very talented, like uh, senior animation director that worked on like 3D CGI animation movies. And you bring like new voxel artists with like, they are young, but you feel like they have like a great potential and you already, uh, verified uh, their skills and you know it works great um the second thing that we do is like we add like multi uh, we bring together multiple uh the skills team so you have like uh, game designers the designers concept artists uh, narrative designers uh, uh, 3d modelers and animators and actually like narrative designers even though they just when you think they just write text, actually they bring a lot of value because they think ahead of the type of content that the artist can bring. And as those teams talk together, like how they have conceptualized the experience and the content they're going to build, it generally promotes a, a lot more creativity. I'm also going to say something that might, uh, not everyone might agree with, but we found that having a great working environment, having a great office and bringing back people to not do like remote work, but do a majority of work at office, sitting next to other as a creative team, has brought more results. And we we had four days work week uh, at office and one day that they can choose our remote work. And we find like this always those uh, moments where they are not necessarily always producing on in front of the computer, but they talk to go to catch a coffee, to have lunch, etc. Where they still like 
And I think uh, how they can enhance the creativity and it benefits the overall uh, the, the, the end results, the experience they produce. The second thing we've done is we also assembled a team generally from the, all the best artists that we had from the community. So somehow we uh, we promoted them to sell these and then we promoting them into the one team. We're committing that work on the best project. And, and they, it created a lot of emulation because they feel like not only their skills are is being valued, but we give them the best ideas in the world to work on. So like they want to show and, and double down the report to make sure like when they work on uh, I don't know, the Walking Dead or other music or Cube Dub experience, like something they create uh, will, will be uh, uh, always by that first the quality will always be perceived. That's great. The second uh, thing we put is the ecosystem. The third thing we are putting is the ecosystem. Uh, and within that ecosystem, we have regular workshop uh, certification program where like our artists are reviewing the work from external studios, sharing guidelines, best practice. We also have community manager who do an amazing job. I think they stream almost on a daily basis. Uh, we can name them, Panda Pop or Bob City, uh, V for Game Maker, and they share live on YouTube. So they have live interaction with the creator and the community, answering their question, giving them recommendation on how to improve. And I feel like this is kind of like mentoring, sharing, that a lot of artists, they say, if if she was not there, live streaming as she creates, I wouldn't be there. Like I learned so much just by following and participating and engaging. And uh, and, and we can feel that uh, somehow they, they, they are become the modern educator, the modern like um, people who share the skill, the skill set, the knowledge, and uh, have been encouraging more and more people by uh, to enter the space. And, and Sandbox being a creative platform focused on user generated content, um, we, we can feel that having an overall community of creators involved is generally um, like a very positive. And as we've been developing our ecosystem globally, like today I'm in India, last week I was in Singapore, and uh, before I was in Korea, in Japan, and in Hong Kong, and a few months before, I was here with you in Thailand. Thing as well, like we are very approachable. Like we are here, we are next to the creator. We want to see what you do. We want you to show us what you do. And we want to feel like we are part of a, a great journey. I think this uh, human touch to everything we are building is so important. Like that's uh, for me also something that a uh, lot of creators, they get isolated. They are. Uh, sometimes they have mental depression, they work too much isolated, yeah, and now they connect with peers, both in physical uh, 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 events and location or in the uh, virtual world, has been tremendously impactful for them. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, like, we're glad to be the platform that enables that. Yeah, it creates a lot sense of uh, inclusivity. And yeah, I really like it, like, like all the global team like coming into one and no one has been like left behind. Yeah, I really love this. Yeah, and one of the questions before we, yeah, we, we end this uh, panel, um, I would like to know your view, like how are, like what, what do you think of the metaverse integrated in, in your daily life? Is it like one of the online games that you play? Like, what, what do you think about this? Maybe we can start with Megan first. Um, I, I, I don't think that Metaverse is going to be uh, uh, like a ready player one type of thing. Like, well, we're not gonna live in that dystopian. Like. Us human, like we will not tolerate for that. I'm not sure about like future generation, but I think in like the next like 30 or 50 years, like we we wouldn't like live in that unless like the living condition like wouldn't allow us to. Um, as long as the living condition allow us to, I think metaverse is eventually going to be another social media platform, uh, another another internet 
that allow us to um, learn about new content, uh, uh, connect with other people on on like on the portable device. I, I I don't want to say like mobile phone anymore. It could be like oh in fifty years, who knows? Like your metaverse will be in your hands. Like we we never know. Um, but I I think like in in that future. Metaverse will eventually be like another layer of our life. Yeah. What about you, Kun Tang? Um, for me, I feel like it will be beneficial in in all kinds of levels in terms of like from recreational or up until um, big business meeting from whole different places in the world. So. Yes, it will be like another layer in terms of like social media platform, people reconnected or you meet new friends. Uh, but it can be used in terms of like meetings as well, you know, um, doing projects or even like in, in corporate work. Um, for instance, my company, we've been planning on making virtual um, presentations. I would say, I would call it virtual pre uh, presentations. Um, if I have to fly to Korea for a meeting, it in a few years it could be just us sitting at the meeting table and they put on maybe the Vision Pro goggles. I don't know, maybe, and then they can see everything. Um, that could be another use case too. So we don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but I think we're kind of like see a little bit of the glimpse of where the direction is going to be um, heading to in, in this couple of years. Well, I like that idea. Yeah. And you can like decorate your own meeting yeah, exactly. room, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What about you, Seb? Yeah. How do you integrate the metaverse? Yes, I, I yeah. think I have like, uh, I definitely have like a prime position to see like, what people are making with sandbox and in the matters in general is far beyond game. Um, it's it's kind of like an ivory, a new format. It's ivory, so you have like um, more social activation at the core, and then you have live gamification, which include quests, which include uh, leaderboards, and might be able to add uh, multiplayer gameplay, etc. Maybe with some of the updates coming in sandbox. Um, but if you're a typical gamer, you, you, I think the feeling you get when you're the metaverse is like you are uh, uh, a, a rather like exception. Like it's not your typical tragedy game or battle royale, Fortnite, etc. It's always below. But if you are not a gamer, which still like the majority of our world population, um, you actually are quite surprised because like then you can learn to discover new skills, to chat with people, and then you have simple activities. It feels a lot like a giant theme park, which is pretty open to everyone. Like you said, it's quite inclusive, it's quite diverse, and the content you're being presented with also represent that, like in its architecture, uh, which goes beyond a lot of physics, in uh, the fact that it represents multiple ideas and content from uh, around the world, and uh, the fact that you're seeing things that you are not finding on other platforms. But I like to think like we're going there to explore, to connect, socialize, but we also come back for the friendship we've made. And because we we see value in those activities, in collecting, uh, in completing quests, collecting resources, um, and climbing little boards where we earn some rewards as well. And that is new. That's something you don't find on all the platform, actually. Your time isn't valued in the same way. So back to the main topic of like jobs uh, in the metaverse. I, I think like um, the, the mere perception that the time you spend uh, uh, as a player into your favorite game is would, would be worth nothing or actually would be a, a sunk cost because you have to spend your own money sometimes to engage and, and get a greater experience. Here, the idea is like to go more the opposite way, like to create a, a paradigm shift where the time you spend is value and you want it by uh, Thank you, Seb. Yeah, and um, I think our time is running up, but um, I want uh, our panels to, you know, uh, 
tell us or parting words and also if you want to leave your the projects that you are currently doing or you want to recruit people into your projects feel free this is your floor um so we've been working with sv10x for like a year um and we are we are launching um sv10x headquarters um um only like um the first three ex uh the first two experiences um during like the alpha four and then we are we also work with like uh aisha like an ip for um a vtuber um and we we plan to launch soon yeah but when when we are launching we will tell the public yeah stay tuned and yes we are recruiting <laughs> we are recruiting uh creators uh if if you're interested like feel free to reach out to me yeah um, for us, uh, we're we're making two games right now, which are um, do we have? Oh, we have a little presentation. Um, so basically, we're we're um, turning our Gan Kluay animation IP into um, the metaverse. So we have the uh, we have one game on 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 um, Sandbox and another one on um, Roblox. Uh, totally different kind of games, and we also have virtual production. Sorry about the misspelling. It will be a virtual production, like I've mentioned before. It will be the biggest in Southeast Asia, and um, it will be a one-stop service. So um, that will be uh, beneficial for us in terms of like um, film production, series production, um, game creation, um, metaverse, and so so forth, so forth. Um, as well as Kun Megan said, we also want new team members. So please come talk to us if you, you are interested in um, joining us on this journey. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, okay, that was Roblox. Okay. Yeah, our speakers will be here like afterwards, so feel free to talk to our speakers. And also, like Seb, do you have any parting words for our audience today? Uh, two comments first. Like, very impressed to see like how uh, a Christian tool as simple as VoxEdit and uh, Sandbox as is now enabling to create like transmedia stories. When I see the poster where it fits the sandbox, which you create in CGI content, and that you can also bring voxel to life and a mixture of those. The, the importance of user generated content, like it's heavily underestimated, but anyone in this room should be able to become a creator. And through training, hopefully, we'll, we'll become better at better. Right? Like you're not born a creator, you become one at the end. And uh, uh, like maybe that's my conclusion. Like, um, feel free to try. Like, it's uh, it, it's really an opportunity to discover like uh, what are the possibilities of the platform to maybe uh, open up to a new uh, shift in your career and uh, join a platform where like the work you're going to do is very valued and you can become one of the leading users to build a metaverse. Thank you so much, Seth. Yeah, and don't forget to check out the sandbox uh, sandbox platform after this. Okay, I think it's time. Yeah, for our food, <laughs> it's available in the pantry after this. And thank you so much. If you have any questions, feel free to come and talk to our speakers. Thank you so much. Uh, And suddenly there are few creators in Thailand and not many people job. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, okay. What would you do to in, uh, to promote the creation of a career in the metaverse in Thailand as uh, currently? There are few the creator in Thailand and 
not many supporting jobs in Thailand. Well, um, I'm not sure about not many creators because I feel like the, in this field it can be very you know adaptable and and, and um, for for us I feel like um, in in the metaverse specifically career path maybe it is a little bit of a niche um, business segment but um, uh, in order to promote we have been. Um, reached out by quite a quite a few of universities um, in terms of like uh, interning, specifically in terms of metaverse, uh, BU, or even animations, which can be also reapplied into this field as well. I'm not sure if that will help in the long run, but I think it, it's a good start in terms of like giving new opportunities for for the new generations to try in this field with the real, you know projects and, and employees that you know, are working on these projects with the skills and stuff, yeah. Anyone has anything to add? Uh, I, I can actually add. Um, I, I think with, like, with promoting, one, one thing that we are doing is we, we are launching a, a workshop on, uh, for designers um, with SUB 10X. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, as well as uh, with job demands, and there's actually quite a lot of job demands in like the middle world. It's for us, it's really difficult to find a quality um, creators. Yeah, so like we, 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 we want creators. <laughs> yeah, whether full-time or part-time, like we always, always look, look for new creators, yeah. Anything which you like to add? Yeah. Sure. Uh, happy to add this. So I think a little bit more than a month ago, we had uh, the Zendo Thailand Partner Day, where we showcase uh, several of the studios of our building on the platform uh, already. And, uh, that shows like there's a lot of activities and uh, uh, a demand already from those studios. Uh, we should probably, someone should probably start like a job board. Uh, and uh, us, we should relay as well the demand from the global studio around the specific talent set. I heard a few web three related job uh, platform, which we are trying to partner for uh, like create a special category for metaverse and sandbox. Uh, there are uh, self-service platforms as well, like Sandstorm, for example, where uh, people post projects and artists are free uh, to apply for them. And they can also create and organize themselves into teams. So sometimes we don't need to have like a, a very formal established company uh, to get started to work on projects. You can assemble and be part of smaller team and so on, based on the size of those projects. For which I think it is also interesting to see uh, to first build your reputation as a creator, to uh, see the demand, and to be able to pick your project based on also your personal interest. Um, we should maybe start something over social media, like. Uh, and ask like which are all the creator studio uh, on our certification page who are like recruiting or looking for talents. Um, I've seen that in the video game industry before, like there's like a, a big video game conference in San Francisco, like the GDC, where one full day is dedicated to like students coming with their portfolio or uh, to try to go and work at the biggest AAA companies in the world. But like we can change that, and again, like not really focus on like just people like company. Like the opportunities everywhere nowadays is like um, think about it. Like uh, the studio that you know, they even exist a year ago, started from scratch with one person, became a two, ten, and sometimes bigger team. Can work with the top brands in the world now. Like we we have really brought like more equal opportunity and massive opportunity on the market. But you have to be a little bit more uh, following on the Twitter, sharing over social media, or being part of the effort to also find those opportunity while we are working to to, to broaden the, the spectrum. Anything? Anyone has any more question? Huh. 
Hi, I'm Jeng uh, from Hang Tech. We are a startup for building the game that's just already startup. Uh, I heard from the news that even Meta, they cut more job in the uh, Metaverse company, like many tech company. And I would like to know uh, what your opinion or about the Metaverse in the future. Is it's, it's going to be the bike way? Is it's going to be the right part that we are going to to have it or in uh, in the near future? Is it going to be the success or is what is the uh, the great problem or challenge that you face? Thank you. Seb, you want to take this question? <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> um, so. The way a company, uh, like when you're building a part of your fundamentals and your platform, like I know, you have essentially three aspects to consider. One is the content, two is the product, and three is the ecosystem. We, I believe, like Meta didn't really have like great content and probably not as well a great ecosystem. They had products, but we, we saw the limits of it. And they have been cutting people on the product side even. So, shifting to different priorities because Like there are large companies that needs to generate a certain amount of revenue for uh, keeping covering their costs and their shareholders, etc. And large companies don't look at the opportunity the same way as like the new assets. So what they believe is too small, I believe it's already big enough for like the majority of the rest of the market to keep up building on. Second thing is, um, you know, like sometimes you shouldn't worry too much as well. Uh, But by what you hear in the press, in the media, I said, right. Like in the same way, like everyone is asking me what's happening, France is in fire, I'm going to Paris. No, no, no. Like that's just one vision the media wants to put. But the reality is like everything is fine, it's safe, don't worry. And the same in the metaverse, like I see the activity from the builders. I meet new creators that are joining on board uh, from various countries. New brands are coming every week. The product gets better and better. And that's all I, I need to follow, like making sure that the core objects are there and that still people who are like actively building onto the platform. And uh, my focus is to make sure like I develop an ecosystem and I bring them great product so you can make right content on it. So in a way, I, I don't see a dark future at all. Uh, I think like it's a matter of focus that let's keep building what we already envisioned on, on the, initially on our roadmap five years ago uh, and uh, be very creative driven. I still believe that the success will come from the creators and by very being very focused on their needs, what they want to do and, and making sure like uh, we cater to all their needs it will surface something positive out of it. Thank you, Seb. Can I actually add to that? Yeah, sure, um, sure. I, I, think, I think one thing um, I, I want everyone to understand is that last year, like what happened to us like for the past three years, it's, it's a lot. Like we have COVID um, and then after COVID we have recession. Um, it is normal for big company, like if they want to survive, they have to come back and focus on what they are really, really, really good at. In in meta case is um is that social media. That's that edge, not metaverse. Like metaverse is like the new thing that they decided, okay, I am going to jump in and hire a lot of people, uh, a lot of workforce into the company and and a company that scales so fast um, is not very sustainable. Um, so that's that's the reason why there's there's a lot a lot of tech company that actually doing really well during like um, 2020 um, they have to cut a lot of people off. That's very unfortunate. But we know like they make a hard decision so that they can continue to survive sustainably. So I, I, I think it's, it's, it's normal, like this is normal thing. Yeah, so. Mm. Okay. Any, 
I'm not sure whether that yeah. answer your question or not. Yeah, but hope it does. <laughs> Uh, I would like to know this is the right part that we are going to to work with it, you know, because uh, a lot of technology is immersed every day. And like programming thing, we have many languages and take, it takes time to learn the new thing as well. So if you say you're going to be the, the, the one that lead, leads us to the metaverse world, right? You, I don't know if you... Uh, can promise or provide that uh, give us uh, our strength that you're going to be the work with it in continue, continue with that one. Yeah. Any views from our speakers? I, I can I? Okay. I I think it's going to be a long game. I I think Seb knows that it's it's a long game. We we are betting with some something new. Um, we never know whether it is going to to um, success a hundred percent. Like we we never know that. No one knows that. Um, when internet start, um, there's a dot com bubble. Like um, we we are familiar with like dot com bubble, and it's a lie. It we we have internet until this day. We have web two, and then it progressed into like web three. Um, be because of dot com bubble, like the metaverse um, that we think it is right now might not be the metaverse that is going to happen in the future. Only um, creators, only builders, only user like will define, and it takes time and a lot of patience. Yeah. Okay, any more views? Anything to share? Yeah, if, if no, and any more questions from the audience? Yeah, if, if no, then uh, thank you so much for joining tonight with us. And um, thank you, the, our speakers, our panel today for sharing a valuable insights and yeah our, all of our three speakers are hiring <laughs> and if you want to know more about the projects feel free to reach out thank you so much Bye. <laughs> bye bye Seb. Bye. thank you <laughs> Thank you.